See parkandrec.com for details and see you at the pool. It's the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com. Our conversation with the folks from Citizens Ambulance brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. So Bill Simmons with us this morning and Dwayne Dills and Sandy Gillette. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. It's good to have you all with us here today. This is a momentous uh, announcement by Citizens Ambulance. At least it appears to be to me, uh, Bill, uh, as the president of the board. Uh, tell me your impression of, of, of this, the magnitude of this uh, announcement. Well, it's the proper thing to do at this stage of time to be able to consolidate all together uh, with the way funding is. It's a uh, more understandable, and I think it's going to move along smoothly. But I just wanted to bring up something that happened to me back in 1963. I know you didn't think I was that old, but I am. <laughs> I was in junior high school, and we had a snow. Uh, actually, it was a sled riding uh, night out at the College Lodge Road, or College Lodge, and uh, it was toward the end of the night. Uh, we were going down the hill, and, and we inadvertently hit a, a car that was coming the other way. Uh, and so... We had two injuries. I had a head injury. Another fellow broke his leg. So they called an ambulance. Mm -hmm. A hearse came. This was in 1963. I remember those. Okay. See, well, good. You make me feel better already. (laughs) So that's the point that in 1964, Citizens was established, and now 60 years later, here we are. Uh, Life has changed quite a bit, uh, but the the services that are performed by our folks are top-notch, but it was just something we had to simplify by going all under a nonprofit organization. So that's the start of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and the board last week, the executive uh, board uh, making the decision, or the board of directors as a whole, making the decision uh, to, well, Sandy, explain to me uh, the corporation uh, that, uh, or the company that uh, Citizens is joining up with is actually a company that you've been a part of for quite some time. Well, we have ASMC, who was the management company, uh, uh, the part that ran the uh, management and operation of Citizens Ambulance. And we have the executive board, three of whom are here, and uh, we are Citizens uh, Ambulance Board. Uh, well, it's confusing, two and the same, uh, making one. At this point in time, looking at models and what's going on in the EMS industry, uh, the biggest thing for us was how can we do sustainable funding? Um, I've been here how many times talking with you, different programs over the last few years, uh, mm-hmm. donors, uh, programs, contests. Uh, you just can't keep doing that. So the board, we got together and we thought, you know, the best way to do it is if we just become one nonprofit entity, Mm -hmm. and that will enable us to not only provide uh, emergency transport, but non-emergency transport, which is very important for the folks in the county. Yeah, yeah. Dwayne Dills, let's uh, talk with you about this as well. Uh, As we, you know, I I think the general public doesn't really have to get a great big handle on what's happening here. Uh, It's it's the whole idea of citizens uh, placing itself in position to be able to continue to offer the services that it that it does, correct? That's absolutely the goal and the uh, motivation for doing this. Uh, my time with citizens goes back to the early 70s on the board, and I've participated ever since. And back then, we were blessed to have many very strong community leaders as uh, board members, executive board members, and we're able to accumulate a a reasonable surplus for a rainy day. And the problem is, 10 years or so, it really started to rain, and it's raining harder and harder. And all the ambulance services across the country are unable to sustain their cost of readiness and their cost of providing service uh, based upon the changes in the economy and the insurance reimbursements and the uh, mandates for higher uh, certifications of care. And uh, so we have unfortunately used up all of that surplus and are not able to fund our 
operating shortfall internally anymore. So we need to change, and we hope this is a significant first step. Bill, uh, when Mm -hmm. we think about um, putting together these two entities into one, um, it it does still take, even though you've worked with uh, this organization for so long, it it does take a a lot of legwork uh, and, and background work in order to determine, is this working can it work? What's the future hold? And how does it all work together? And you put, uh, you've actually had an independent auditor to come in and look at the way things have gone, mm-hmm. uh, and and decided, yeah, it it can work. Let's let's start the process of making this transfer. Well, I think that's right. And thinking back, citizens itself, uh, that nonprofit is the one that owns all the assets, and ASMC were the ones that took care of the employees. So now bringing those employees over with citizens will, to the public, you won't even notice a difference. And everybody that has worked there for all these years, whenever someone says, where do you work? They say, well, I work for Citizens Ambulance. So it's going to be seamless to the public for sure, uh, but I think it's just a nice way of consolidating everything together and, uh, and making it work. Putting this all together in the transition, I know Rob Walbeck uh, is, is leading mm-hmm. that effort. Uh, so you got the right guys doing things. Sure. Um, uh, talk about how that is going to. I, I don't know if timeline is the correct way to to uh, attach it, but but how do you see it all playing out down the road? Well, that's a good question. I'm, I'm thinking that it it should be able to take place, but we're hoping by year end, so that we start 2025 all consolidated together, um, and it's just a matter of getting. Uh, CPAs and attorneys to come in to make sure that we're not missing anything that could come back to bite us. But from this, from what we've talked about and met about so far, it looks like it can, can come along pretty smoothly. Uh, the employees, obviously, they're number one on our list to affect the least, and we can see where there shouldn't be any kind of a hiccup bringing them over under the citizens' ambulance umbrella. Yeah. Sandy, we have seen uh, other ambulance services fold. Um, and their employees be left on the outside. Uh, but more important than that, their communities left uncovered. Right. Citizens, in some cases, has had to go over into other communities that have lost their ambulance services and become their provider there, which stretches the resources of citizens uh, as well. But uh, those are the kinds of things that are happening within this industry, aren't they? This is why um, we want to be proactive, because uh, we are seeing what's happening I think our next step, uh, besides the legal paperwork and type of thing, is we've got to meet with the municipalities. Uh, those folks have to understand, which I think they do now with all the talk and the, uh, you know, news coverage and that type of thing, that they need to contribute to support this model that we're going after. And uh, we don't want patient care is ultimately what we want. And we're very blessed that ASMC, they too recognize what has happened. And so together, uh, the bottom line is patient care. We do not want to be in a situation like Bill was back in 1963. And it's happening in communities. So the nice thing is uh, they have no debt. Uh, They aren't starting off in the red, Mm -hmm. so now it's up to us to find the way and and the means to go forward so that we can be here for another 64 years. Yeah. Dwayne, I thought it was uh, very well put by you when you said uh, that it hasn't stopped raining for a few years (laughs) now, Uh, and and that really is the case within the the emergency services whole family of of the way that things are operating uh, in this day and age. Uh, It it's it's just the case where the the financial model uh, is so difficult to sustain, and uh, so you have to find creative ways to make things happen, and that's what this seems to be. Well, the current system is clearly broken, not only from the uh, uh, funding sources, which we're hoping that this move makes us more attractive to governmental agencies to provide some funding, which has to happen, and. Uh, You know, we've worked very hard over the years, and it's very difficult to see the kind of service that the community has been willing, has been uh, enjoying, uh, be threatened to the extent that it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope that this uh, will garner some uh, uh, support from communities and uh, government, and 
also the system needs to be fixed. You go out and make a call, and if you don't transport, you don't get any pay. So you go out and render service with some Narcan and so on and spend uh, four or five hundred dollars and don't get any reimbursement just because of the way the law reads. No. And we are required to respond uh, whether we're going to get paid or not. So there's a lot of things that need to change, and hopefully we're taking a significant first step for Indiana County. So yeah. we'll see. Bill Simmons, when we think about um, the way that the system is set up for, mm -hmm. for health care and emergency services in, in Pennsylvania, um, we know that there is, is a great need for a new legislative approach, uh, and, and they're working on that. We're hearing that they're working on that. And, and does this move by citizens, does it sort of boost that uh, or bring more to the fore the need for this, this sort of uh, reform in Pennsylvania? I think it does because it's given us the opportunity to talk to our representatives here, uh, for, at least for Pennsylvania, to you know, bring it to the forefront of what we are bumping into. And like Dwayne pointed out about how we respond to all calls, perform services with them, and then if they refuse to be uh, taken to the hospital, we don't get paid. Uh, last month, that only happened 90 times. <laughs> only. <laughs> In one month. So yeah. just to let you know, that's what goes on. Uh, and that's that's very difficult to to try to keep the doors open when you bump into that. So I think we are going to get more uh, response. And I'll tell you the other thing is because of the ones that are failing, uh, then that way that brings it out too to say, geez, we can't continue to have this happen. Yeah. And the thing that you have to understand is we have to respond, even if it's in a community that's not really being funded to us, mm -hmm. because it's just the right thing to do. But by the same token it's not really fair to the organization because that's time and money spent and we'll never get it back. Yeah. Puts all kinds of pressure on the resources to keep oh, the doors it, open. It really does, no doubt about it. Even keeping gas in the tank, Sandy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, sure. that's, that's well, exactly in, right. in further response to that question, it's interesting to see, you know, this situation is uh, nationwide, not just Pennsylvania-wide or Western Pennsylvania-wide. And it's interesting to see that there are some significant ambulance services watching what we're doing, uh, hoping that we're creating a, a model that they can uh, assume themselves. So we're kind of breaking ground, and I hope it's uh, for the better of this community, and it is not uh, uh, uncommon with the DNA of Citizens Ambulance Service over the years. We have been groundbreakers for rural EMS from the beginning. So hopefully we'll be successful. Yeah. Citizens Ambulance has been a pioneer that a lot of folks have looked to for an example for a lot of years. It's your hat. Thanks all for coming in to talk with Thanks, us. Thanks, Todd. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. It's Indiana in the Morning on WCCS. Flock this way to the Pittsburgh Zoo and Aquarium's Zoo Brew Flock Party. Join us on Saturday, August 3rd for an evening of craft beer sampling, food, music, and entertainment. This 21-plus event helps to support the Pittsburgh Zoo's feathered friends as well as the zoo's conservation efforts. Answer the call of the wild and buy your Zoo Brew tickets today. For more information, visit pittsburghzoo.org. Mom and Dad, are the kids always bored in the summer? Want something safe and fun to keep them active?